Good evening to you. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Marshall Zellinger. Welcome to a special edition of Politics Unplugged After Hours. Your chance to get an insider's look at what's going on at the state capitol and across Colorado. Tonight, we're going to talk about those crowds at last night's Colorado caucuses. The Democrats saying they had a record turnout. We'll see how the decisions made by caucus goers go beyond just the presidential race. Also, we'll hear from those behind a new bill that would force schools to allow students to use cannabis based drugs on campus for their medical issues or face the possibility of losing marijuana tax money earmarked for schools. But first, we're nearing the halfway mark of this year's legislative session. And while lawmakers have introduced hundreds of bills and the Debated quite a few of them. There are still key issues yet to be discussed, like the budgets. And here to talk about where things stand are two of the reporters whose job it is to keep you informed about what's going on at the Capitol. We're joined by Kristen Wyatt from the Associated Press. Happy to have you here. Thanks for having me. And Marianne Goodland from the Colorado Independent. So good evening to both of you. Kristen, we're going to start with you. What do you see as being the biggest accomplishment so far with the legislature? I'd say the biggest accomplishment is that we're almost halfway through and all 100 lawmakers are still kicking. <laughs> Nobody's gotten their tires slashed. No, in a, in a good year with a lot of money and everybody getting along, it's very unusual for anything substantive to make it to the governor before that midpoint. This year, probably the most substantive bill on his desk is a marijuana pesticide bill telling the Department of Agriculture to say which pesticides are okay to use on pot. Now that's something they already do, but it kind of puts it in law and there's been a lot of scare about pesticides on pot. So that makes people feel better that, that it's gonna be in law. Shocking that we haven't had any precedent from any other state because we're one of the first to ever yeah. have to deal with that. Marianne, one of the issues year to year so far has been, can we collect rain in buckets or rain barrels at home? So far it's moved as, as pretty good as it can so far. You're a little surprised that it's actually moved along. Yes, because this year, what's different between last year's bill and this year's bill is that a lot of Republicans have been working very hard with the Democrats who introduced the bill and have sponsored it to make it amenable to those over in the Senate who will have the final say on whether or not this bill actually gets to the governor's desk. Why is it such a big issue? Like, why can't they just collect my rain? Why, right. why is it decisive, divisive? And Colorado is the only state in the country that doesn't allow its citizens to collect rain barrels. It has to do with a, a sort of a little known place in water law called the law of prior appropriation. Basically, it means whoever had got that water right first gets to use it, everybody else comes after. And the big fear by Senate Republicans in particular is that if people collect rainwater, it's going to impact how much water is available for those people who have what are known as senior water rights. All right, so we know the budget is, is the big topic, will be the big topic. Where, where, where do things stand, Kristen? Uh, I think we're in a holding pattern that we've been in for, since the very first few days. Um, they're waiting on the latest uh, revenue forecast. This is an estimate of how much dollars the state's going to have to spend. That's coming up later this month. Till then, both sides are just kind of battening down, waiting to see what the numbers look like before making their final attack of how to spend it. And part of that final attack will involve the hospital provider fee. We're not going to put anybody to sleep trying to describe all of this, but essentially a movement by the legislature on the hospital provider fee could free up money elsewhere. Marianne, you, you've dealt with this topic for a few years now. Ever since the bill was, was written back in 2009. And Republicans, are, are especially the uh, Senate Republicans, have really dug their heels in on this. They don't want to see a hospital provider fee bill because they feel that it will... Uh, first of all, take away taxpayer refunds. They also believe that it's unconstitutional, and they have an opinion from the General Assembly's attorneys to back them up. However, this past Monday, uh, Attorney General Cynthia Kaufman sided with the governor and the Democrats and said, yes, she does believe it is constitutional. The Speaker of the House said this week that she does plan to introduce that bill on March 18th, the same day the revenue forecasts come out. And she's hoping that there will be some movement on it that will get the bill into the Senate and that there can be some compromise, particularly over a bill on transportation funding. That's kind of the deal that, that right. everybody's angling for. All right, so March 18th is the uh, target date to watch for that. Correct. I think with that, we're going to continue our conversation right after this. Thank you.